What's going on Imperials, it's Emperor Cubone here. Part of the joy of starting a new Pokemon game is meeting the professor for them to give you a choice of which starter Pokemon you'd like to pick. This selection can make or break your experience in the game, on top of being a point of contention in social circles, but oftentimes the trio of starters are inextricably linked to the region for which they have become sort of pseudo-mascots. However, what if they weren't? See, not all starters are exactly best suited for the region in which they find themselves, and in fact, some of them are quite poorly placed for the challenges that lie ahead. So what if we could better pair the starter groups with the places in which they would perform best? So by taking the trios as a whole, not splitting them up, where would each unit thrive the most? I mean, I guess we could create a chart to do it individually, but that doesn't seem like the best course of action. And by the way, each region is not guaranteed, so if a set of starters would both be best in the same spot, we might not even see every region here. So firstly, we have the original starters from Kanto, Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle. We've known them for a long time, and many people say that the choice here is even a sort of difficulty system in the game based on the gyms. But will that hold up if they were found at another region besides Kanto? Well, there are a number of factors to consider. Most early games are made up the same way, so grass-type starters are going to struggle against the poison types, birds, and bugs. Whereas the fire-type prevails as a rarity, so that's not really going to make a difference on placement. What could is the makeup of the gyms in the game, and also the evil teams that might be about and what kinds of Pokémon that you'll be attacked with over and over. That's why I'm not sure if the likes of the Paldea region would be a good fit with these particular starters with Team Star bases and Titans everywhere, even if the gyms could be handled okay. So when fully evolved, we see Venusaur is a dual poison type, Charizard gains the flying type, and Blastoise stays a pure water type. So that is worth factoring in, and all in all, I think maybe the place for these starters to shine could be the Sinnoh region. Right from the start, you have Rock, just like in Kanto, but with Ivysaur being poison, it's going to help out a lot more in the Grass Gym. And then that poison would also help it resist the fighting, while Charmeleon could at least beat Lucario, with the higher defense of the turtles standing up to the physical fighting type as well. And then after Crash or Wake, pretty much all of the gyms are wide open with possible exploits galore. Byron is weak to all of the starters, if you teach Blastoise Flash Cannon, Candace doesn't stand a chance, and sure, two of the starters are weak to Volkner, but if you're at the end of the game without even a second Pokémon to use, I'll just tell you right now, you're playing the game wrong. And of course, they each contribute adequately against the Elite Four, but they could also hold up surprisingly well to Team Galactic. The Squirtle and Bulbasaur lines could both stare down Mars's Perugly, with Ivysaur's healing especially being of note, and at the very least, your Fire Lizard could cause a burn. And like we said, with this Grass Starter taking neutral poison damage, the flood of bats from the Grunts wouldn't be as much of a factor. So if these classic choices had to be located somewhere else, I think it would suit them best to be given out by Professor Rowan. Maybe Oak brought them over in one of his frequent visits. So then, what about Johto? Comparably, they are pretty boring because they all remain a pure type the whole time. So how would that change their outcome? Well, not to complain about the newer games, but it is true that they seem to be mostly easier, partially because of prominent trainers having fewer overall Pokémon with fewer usable moves apiece. So these monotyped Pokémon don't have quite as much to worry about. So honestly, I think the Gen 2 starters might actually fare best in the Galar region. Now, they are each going to run into a problem with the first three gyms, that's just how things are laid out here, but they're also not very challenging with rather weak teams. And then the rest of the game is largely open, especially with Team Yell not having a single super effective Pokémon against them until halfway through the game. I guess maybe Galar was designed with this in mind considering their starters, but we'll get to them. As far as Meganium, Typhlosion, and Feraligator, it seems to me that they would be able to take on Gen 8 even better than maybe their even native Johto region. Not to mention doing alright in the Isle of Armor to boot. Maybe Mustard should have given these out instead. Next up are the Hoenn starters, Trico, Torchic, and Mudkip and I feel like maybe the Kalos region would work best. I mean, right off the bat, even the Bug-type gym has one taking neutral grass damage, so Trico isn't that far behind. 
And then with the huge gap before Gym 2, you're definitely going to get a Combuskin, so all three of them would be useful against the Rock. And then you've got other gyms where they'd all have varying effectiveness, but with Sceptile's speed, he could easily hit Wolfric's ice with strong coverage and special moves, Blaziken could use its mixed attacking power to overcome even Psychic or Fairy, and Swampert's ground makes it perfect to take on Clement when most other water types would struggle. Also, not for nothing, we know that the Kalos region has Mega Evolution, and the Hoenn starters are the only other trio where all of them have a Mega on the table. That's not the only reason I picked this, I promise, it just makes it all the better when they can boost their power, and Sceptile gets to gain the Dragon typing on top of everything else, which makes it a lot easier for him to take on Team Flare, since that really was my one hang-up with the Forest King, so a Mega evens things out. That means that we could easily see this beautifully done trio of starters rule the Kalos region, especially with the epidemic lack of overall filled out teams that they have throughout. But speaking of Hoenn, I actually think that would make a good new home for the next group of starters, the ones that we initially saw in Gen 4. We already know how a fire and fighting type does here, so Infernape, who is much faster, would do just fine. As for the other starters, the fact that the evil teams are largely water or ground based, and they lean into dark as well, means that all three of them would be able to take on Aqua or Magma relatively well. If you could get Monferno by the first gym, then once again, they would all be able to contribute perfectly. And are you telling me that Grottle's healing moves and Prinplup's flying coverage couldn't best Brawly? Now, cue plenty of people saying Empoleon sucks because it would have a hard time with Watson. Yeah, well, Infernape would have a tough time dealing with the Sotopolis gym too, so they're each gonna have their strife, but on the whole, it works out pretty well. I mean, when it evolves, Torterra's got ground to best Flannery. Even being weak to flying, Infernape could still tackle Winona's Tropius or Skarmory with its flames, Empoleon easily obliterates Liza and Tate, and its steel typing helps against the Ice and Dragon in the Elite Four. And all three of them have so much potential for being super effective against multiple of Steven's Pokémon as champion. And also, this region being famous for its trying rival battles would be perfect because this trio all counter each other across all of their dual types. Things. So it works out great in pretty much any way you look at these Sinnoh starters being in the Hoenn region. Then we have the Unova starters, and for them, I think it would work instead to be found in Johto. Any grass starter is going to struggle early on, so Snivy's no worse off here, but possibly getting a Pig Knight by Whitney would be huge. Also, Servine can actually learn some good TMs, unlike Bayleaf, so it could still contribute against the likes of Morty, just like the other two starters. And once again, all of them have sufficient super effective usage against the Steel and Ice-type gyms, and even with two of them staying pure-typed, they are much more diversified than the original Johto starters, so they can still take on random challenges and actually do pretty decently against Team Rocket as well. And for some reason, I feel like these starters would be good leaders for taking on the Kanto region after, I don't think that should factor into it all that much, so maybe somebody can mod a Johto game for the Gym 5 starters to be in it from the start. After that, we have the Kalos group of starters, and I think that they would thrive in the Gala region. Now, I will admit, a part of this comes from their class inspirations, since I feel like it would be quite fitting to have a knight and a wizard in a British-based region. Granted, the ninja doesn't slot in as well, but the idea of the character classes goes perfectly with Galar and they actually do pretty well in a battle standpoint as well, with the fighting, psychic, and dark typings having no real overlap with the regular starter types, providing two completely separate stab options to dole out. Sure, Chestnut may be weak to ice, but they're weak to fighting. Greninja may be weak to fairy, but he can still blast out fast water attacks, and that's only in the case where he doesn't have one of his super strong abilities as well. Even before these three evolve, they get strong coverage moves that would allow them to overcome obstacles other starters would get stuck on. So again, this region is rather easy overall, but these fantastical starters would be right at home in the grand halls of the Gala region. The Alola starters come next, and I think they might actually do well in the most recent Paldea region. Now, this did start with Rallet, since it begins with a dual flying type, which gives it an edge within the first two gyms like no other grass starter can have. Even Poplio can learn Icy Wind before it evolves to help it out, where other waters would normally struggle. And really, I was worried about Primarina the most, because while the other starters have clear advantages in the later gyms, the Fairy doesn't add all that much. But that's part of why Paldea is so fitting for this trio, because there's much more to do than the usual, and Pop 
Hoplio could help out a lot with the Fire Dark and Fighting Team Star bases, and even some of the Titans. So the starters are more balanced over the entirety of the game, so I think the Alola Trio would fit really well in the open world of the Paldea region. Then we have the Galar starters, who are the only other group that remain monotyped throughout their entire lives. Well, we haven't really brought it up yet, but the Alola region could reasonably house these Pokémon. On the whole, the Alola region is set up differently, by having trials, which lead to not needing to be as specialized against particular types, because you really only face the Totem Pokémon. The whole first island has a normal trial, and then you battle the fighting Kahuna, which all three options can handle equally. And then Akala has a trial for each one of those types, but by then you're able to get a double-kicking Raboot, or maybe even squeeze out a knockoff from your Thwacky. Speaking of, even Team Skull using the vast amount of poison types that they have wouldn't stand up to a boom burst from Rillaboom. So even with their solo types, and the fact that their kind of odd theming doesn't really mesh with the island aesthetic, I think the Gen 8 starters would do really well in taking on this tropical paradise, and might even be more appreciated there than in their current nation. Since unfortunately, they do seem to be likely to go down as the least popular grouping of starters to date. And we should probably at least check in on the Hisui form starters since they are a little bit different, and I think that once again they might fare best in the Paldea region. The Hisui region itself doesn't really matter what you pick as a starter, because you're mostly going to run around catching stuff anyway, and when you do fight, you're just dodging and throwing things. But in Paldea, these new forms of the starters we knew could really come into their own. Whether that's Samurott rocking the Ghost Gym, or Decidueye stomping out the Steel, or Typhlosion now being able to tower over the Psychic, it would be able to show off the new tricks that they can learn even better than Legends Arceus could, in my opinion. But speaking of Paldea, those are the last starters that we have seen thus far. So how could we best display their brilliance in transferring them to a more linear game? Well, I think perhaps the Sinnoh region could again showcase these starters to a great degree. Just by nature of being newer Pokémon, these starters are blessed with better move pools. Foycoco can get Bite to help against Rourke. Quaxly can use flying attacks to outright best Gardenia. Meowskerata may be weak to fighting types now, but it can also learn Play Rough, so I'd call that at least a draw. I mean, what more could you want with all three of these starters easily beating multiple mid to late gyms and holding decently well against Team Galactic? Can you imagine fighting Barry and surprising him with your Mouskerata firing off a U-turn before his Star Raptor, outspeeding it? Or how well your Skeledurge could handle his Heracross? I think if we had to place these starters in a more restricted environment of not having an open world, that Sinnoh would be a good spot to do it. And honestly, it would just be fun since these starters are basically inverted from what we're used to here. A fast grass type? A fire type with usable defense and HP? A physical attacking water type? These are almost purely opposite of what we usually get in Sinnoh, which is but another reason I think these Gen 9 Pokémon would be so fun to use in the Sinnoh region and really get to shine there. Maybe there are other outside factors upon which to base these decisions, maybe more going into the theming of the trios, but it's undeniable that using starters from another region where you wouldn't expect is a huge novelty in Pokémon. I mean, that is a massive reason why Legends Arceus was so fun in the first place. So, in which other region would you place the starter Pokémon? What about Pikachu or the Eeveelutions from Colosseum? Let me know down in the comments! Also be sure to leave a like, share this video, and subscribe so that you too can become an Imperial today. And until next time, stay grounded!